Hey everyone, this is Paul from Ortho Eval Pal. What I want to do today is I want to talk about three most common causes of bruising in the bicep area here. Okay, so Julie, how old are you? 69. 69 years old and we unfortunately had a, a mountain biking accident the other day about nine or ten days ago, yes. correct? Yes. And you slid, fell off the bike, arm was kind of in an outstretched mm -hmm. position. You you know, hit the elbow a little bit, but also sustain some significant shoulder pain and bruising in this area. So as you can see, the we have some pretty significant bruising around the front of the biceps area here. There's a little bit on the inside, a little bit on the outside. It's not an uncommon area to have some pooling of blood in that area after an injury. So when we see somebody with this type of presentation, we need to be thinking about three things. Number one, um, she could have some bruising like this from a blow to the area. So if she was struck there, hit with something, that could cause some generalized bruising in the area. The next, really, and the most common reason for bruising in this area would be a long head biceps rupture up in this area here. So the long head of the biceps can tear and cause bruising down into the front of the arm. That's very, very common. And the third most uh, common reason why somebody would have bruising or significant bruising in this area is a fracture to the humerus. And that is the case in, in Julie's situation here. Uh, she had an x-ray and MRI. The MRI confirmed that she had a fracture of the greater tubercle and therefore causing a lot of this bruising down in this area. And so how can we tell that the biceps is not the culprit here. Well, one of the things I like to do is not just look for a Popeye muscle because it doesn't always show up with everybody, but I like to give a little bit of resistance. So I'm going to have you hold your arm just like that. Okay. And I'm going to give her a little bit of resistance. So she's going to try to hold into flexion. That's not very painful. And I'm going to take her biceps and I'm going to try to move it side to side. And I don't have a lot of movement. Typically when people have a biceps rupture, either up here or down here, you can take the bicep muscle when you're offering a little bit of resistance and move it around a lot. So uh, if she had a distal biceps rupture, you would be more likely to see bruising down into the forearm where you have a long head bicep rupture, it's more likely to bruise in this part of the arm. Um, but the uh, diagnostic imaging shows that she has a fracture. Uh, she does offer some resistance to the rotator cuff, uh, lightly in all positions. I'm not going to do that because it's a little uncomfortable because the rotator cuff attaches to the greater tubercle, which is where she has her fracture. So we are going to put her into a sling and she's going to stay there for another two to three weeks. And uh, after that, uh, start with some slow range of motion, actively, passively, isometrics, and then build back into gaining range of motion. So um, I thank you, Julie, for letting everybody see what a fractured shoulder looks like and what this bruising pattern looks like. And thank you all for listening. If you like today's video, please give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks.